I want to start with the NFC East because you played there, man. You spent six of your 10 years in the NFC East. Giants with a, a loss on Sunday. They, they were five and two in their last seven games, and then they lost their opportunity to stay in first place. Eagles are struggling. Washington's winning right now. They're six and seven, not at 500. What do you make of this whole NFC East and does, whoever comes out of it? Do you think they even have a chance in that first round playoff game? They'll be home. That's about all. I mean, they'll, they'll be home. You know, this this year is just weird altogether. I don't think anybody can really kind of like stake their claim and say this is the reason why things are happening in the NFC East or really across the NFL because things are so varied, right? Each week is so different. But that's the NFL. That's what we love watching, right? And I, I love watching my old teams. I love watching my old teammates. And some of them are still out there playing. And, uh, you know, I, I love watching the, the Washington football team get out there and <laughs> – and, and here's the thing. It's, it's football. It's 2020. Nothing really makes any sense. I mean, to be honest, Patrick Mahomes, he doesn't make any sense, but he, he keeps throwing that rock and he does an amazing job. Right. So, I mean, there, there, there are things that people do that you watch and you see, and you say to yourself, wow, how did that happen? And it's the same thing when it comes down to records within the NFC East or kind of across the rest of the league. Well, Patrick Mahomes plays for one of your old coaches in, in Big Red, in Andy Reid. And, you know, he leaves Philadelphia and the knock against him was, well, he, he couldn't win the big one. He had all the success, most wins in franchise history, couldn't win the big one. He goes to KC, he finally gets that Super Bowl championship, and he could get more before it's all said and done. How have you seen Andy evolve as a head coach? You know, I was talking to someone the other day day about how it's so important that these pieces of the team come together right it comes down to ownership it comes down to management it comes down to coaching it comes down to players it comes down to sort of you know the the 12th man it comes down to something out of the ordinary that all of a sudden brings this halo of of positive or this halo of success or this halo of super bowls right or around around the team and I think that they have that right they'll never talk about it internally and Andy Reid will say you know we we had that same opportunity in Philadelphia we unfortunately never got there you know he'll have a box comment right because that's Andy Reid but he's saying he's he's still the same big guy as he says he still enjoys his hamburgers and he still enjoys his ice cream <laughs> right and now he just enjoys it in Kansas City and they're doing a great job and and really there's something special in that guy in Mahomes I was talking to another person I mean can you the amazing things that he does rolling out to his left and throwing to his right. I don't think people understand how hard that is. I mean, there is no leverage and he just flicks the ball perfectly. And he's just got these weapons around him that just sink well. And, and, and a lot of people probably, you know, if they make it back, which I think they will this year, you know, they might be in a similar running to like what new England Patriots did. Right. And, it, and if that's the case, then, then the conversations that Mahomes and, um, and Tom Brady have at the middle of the field. I hope someone's catching some of those, uh, some of that audio, because that's pretty spectacular. Now, hi, I want to ask you how real this is, because there's talk about divided locker rooms. And in Philly, there's their quarterback controversy with Jalen Hurts now taking over for Carson Wentz, who got paid to be a franchise quarterback. And then you see in the first game out there, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense against the number one defense in the NFL, and they get the W against the New Orleans Saints. Now, there's a lot that goes into it. There's the you know, offensive line played better. Running back stepped up. Defense was terrific against New Orleans, and, and Doug Peterson made sure to emphasize it's not just the quarterback. And he finally – he didn't say it immediately after the game, but he decided today that, oh, no, Jalen Hurts Hart, is going to start the next game. In that locker room, is could there be division? Could guys be – you know, we hear it all the time. Could there be Hurts guys, Wentz guys? I'm, I'm going to stop you right there, Rob. Rob, look, there, there's always people in the locker room that are going to take sides, yeah. but that always occurs only because the coaching staff makes that case, right? Because if you're going to pay someone over $100 million in order to be a franchise quarterback, there's going to be people that jump on board. It's, it's kind of like any type of corporate in, environment. There's someone that you know is going to move up. And so you, you hit your wagon, you know, uh, to, to, to that, 
you know, to that bus, right? And you just like ride it out. And so all of a sudden now you have Jalen come in there. And then a lot of people might have said from the very beginning, well, I think he's a he's a better better quarterback. I mean, the 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 challenging thing in any of those situations is that as a coach, you set that, but now you have to manage it, right? And as and as fans, or as former players, or as media, we just have to watch the story play out. But that's football, right? We never know exactly how it's going to be. And I think, um, you know, I've I've seen it, I've seen it before. I saw it when I was at the University of Michigan. I, I saw the quarterback controversy. You know, when I when it happened at uh, at the Giants. It happens at every team, but the best teams are the ones that are able to manage it up front and work through it. So hopefully Philadelphia figures it out, and you know Jalen gets his time in the in the sun, and and hopefully he wins. Well, you were involved or a part of a team that had a whole different kind of controversy going on. Not the year you went to the Super Bowl, but the year after the whole T.O. situation. And Don, I can't believe T.O. still got hate in his heart for Donovan, the way that whole thing went down. And watching him, like sometimes some of the things he says on social media is pretty funny. But was that locker room? Now looking back, we're 15 years later. What, what, was that? Was there a split? Was there guys who were like, yeah. So. You know, I was on the defensive side, right? You know, so I wasn't even trying to pay attention to that because, you know, it was myself, Jeremiah Trotter and the rest of the defense, um, you know, Brian Dawkins. I mean, we had it locked up on our side and we can't let the other side of the, you know, other side of the team influence what we do. Right. We can't let them sort of get into our heads. And it's kind of like, you know, what I've been doing sitting at home with Gatorade Endurance and someone like me speaker series. It's like you can't let those that are out there that don't necessarily look like you get into your own mind and say to you, like, you can't do this sport, right? It's a, it's the same type of, same type of mentality. You have to have that mental fortitude in order to find your way through. And that's what's so amazing about, you know, this, this someone like me speaker series is because, you know, I talk to guys that, you know, they they didn't play professional football. Like Max Fennell didn't play professional football. Right. Allison Desir, she didn't play professional football and, and neither did Keonti Story. But Keonti, you know, he's an adaptive athlete that was in the United States military. And so he understands the notion of teamwork and understands the notion of camaraderie. And he climbed to the top of a Mount Vincent in Antarctica. And there was no one up there that looked like him. And so he didn't look at everybody else and say, I can't do this. He found his own motivation. And so in these stories of which, you know, I'm bringing light to in this Gatorade endurance, you know, someone like me speaker series, I'm allowing other people to feel that there's other people out there that are willing to support so that when you do get into those situations, you can find your way through. What inspired you to do this, to, to come up with this? Cause I was one of those guys that was out there. You know, I talk about football all the time. I didn't play football until I got to high school, right? I didn't play football until my freshman year of high school. And it was the hardest first week of my entire life right three a day sleeping in the hallways of of Winston Churchill High School in in Maryland you know what I did before I played football you know I was a swimmer I was a cyclist I was a runner you know I was in the endurance sports world and so that's where I essentially lived and so many times I would look around and I said to myself I'm the only one out here right and so when when Gatorade Endurance was said you know would you like to host this interview with you know these in, these endurance athletes from different backgrounds and help them tell their story it was like a light bulb went off it was like oh my gosh i'm that person 30 years ago before the nfl that sat on that starting line looking around trying to figure out if there was someone out there that was like me and i didn't see anybody and i wish there was and now there are people like max as i said before max Fennell, who's the first he's the first black triathlete Chris Mosier, I know, I know you've seen Chris Mosier. He was, he, he's the first of so many different things, right? <laughs> yeah. He's, you know, triathlete, six-time member of Team USA. You know, uh, was also transgender, first transgender athlete in ESPN, the body issue. Think about that, right? So there's, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, I feel as though would love to be motivated, right? And, and love to be um uh, excited by the fact that there are people speaking on this and that they can be therefore supported. Well, you did the series already. It's going to come out this week, right? Obviously. Yeah. It's coming out on, on Gatorade endurance Instagram channels and it'll start off uh, December 15th. Okay. So 
from those interviews, you know, give me maybe one or two like stories, conversations that really, you know, you were like, wow, man, I can't believe you went through this or you had to do this or, or how you got to this point. Like what stood out to you? I, I think each of them had uh, a different part that, that stood out to me. Um, you know, Chris Mosier, you know, so many firsts and, and, and still fighting for so many firsts, right? Um, as a transgender athlete, um, all of the different battles and all of the different uh, policies and people that he's had to um, convince and, and talk to and, and energize uh, because of his own journey, right? Um, Chianti's story, United States uh, Marine Corps, you know, it was, it was a veteran, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, served our country and was a foster care uh, kid who got adopted at the age of 18 and found that camaraderie, as I mentioned before, and that support by those that were in the, in the military. And when, you know, when, you know, unfortunate things happened and um, he found peace within his community, but also needed something else in order to, to, to find that, that, that energy again. Right. And so you're like, okay, you know, I've, I've, I've lost a limb. I'm going to get out there and I'm going to find an, another way to you know, motivate myself. I mean, who's going to go to Antarctica and climb to the top of Mount, Mount Vincent, right? Who's going to do that? I mean, so his story was amazing. Right. And you're just, and I'm sitting here the entire time, just glued to my computer. Right. It's like, I, I wish it was in person because, you know, you could, you could sense yeah. it, but his story is phenomenal. And, and everybody's had that Allison Desir, you know, she's a mental health advocate and you could, you could hear from her how she was, how she was able to mentally overcome a lot of her postpartum depression that she incurred after having her child by running. And I think the greatest thing of all is, is the fact that everybody in, in these five endurance athletes that I've been able to talk to found their own peace within sort of the endurance and the distance world that they now are fighting to recruit more people that look like them to participate. And so that just gives me, uh, that, that just makes me excited. And I think everybody, as they, they watch, they'll feel the same type of, uh, same, same type of energy. Did you get a chance to speak to Allison a little bit about her, the mental health uh, wellness that she's obviously an advocate for? You just mentioned a little bit. I've had talked to Brandon Marshall recently, a couple other guys who are really trying to break that stigma of, of mental health. Did you guys get into that conversation a little bit? Yeah, we, we talked about it. And, and, you know, I have a lot of friends that are, that have, have gone through that, that as well. I mean, what's, what's, what I think is phenomenal is that now people are actually speaking up and speaking out about it. And they're actually acknowledging the fact that they may not have it all together. And, and sports is something that really allows them to kind of find their way through and that your, your mental, um, your mental health is just as important as your physical health. And, and, and in fact, they, they go hand in hand. Um, so we, we did get into that. And she talked about, you know, even, you know, she found Harlem run, run for all women running diversity, uh, was it running industry diversity coalition that she founded and, and how she finds her own peace as soon as she walks out and she puts on those shoes and she takes off, she goes into a different world. And I, and I think that's important to acknowledge. And a lot of people think, well, I got to do this sport, or this other sport. No, you can just sometimes go outside your, your house. And as I said, <laughs> if I've told people just start off with one lap and if you can get up to 10, great. If you just stick with one, fantastic but at least you're, you're finding a way to, um, to, to, to have that health and wellness in your life. So, honey, man, well, uh, I appreciate it. Nice chat with you. Nice catching up with you. And keep me posted. I, you always got something going on. I know you do. <laughs> you always doing something good. Hey, Rob, I, I appreciate it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things that we figured out in the, in the last 10 months. And there's a, you know, the most important thing is that there's a lot of people that need these nuggets of inspiration and, you know, whether you're raising money in order to allow people to be financially 
um, in a better place um, due to COVID-19 or for people to know that there's other, those, there's other people out there that, that are like them that are doing these different sports and so that they can be inspired. That's just as important. Right. And so as a world, we're coming together and it's just been awesome to work with Gatorade Endurance. So hopefully everybody watches December 15th. Actually, I know everybody's going to watch December 15th <laughs> because these stories, I told you, Chianti story, Chris Moser, Allison Desir, you know, Diana Cara Morales and Max Fennell in, in, inspiring stories. Well, I know I'm looking forward to checking them out, man. So. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Right. Thank you guys. Have a good one.